Hello again, uh, we're back. This time we're at the Wastewater Lagoon and we're gonna quickly go over some Wastewater Lagoon inspections and operational theory of a lagoon. With this lagoon that we're visiting, it has the layout of two anaerobic cells at the front and then a facultative cell, which is a secondary cell that flows into the storage cell that you see on my right hand here. We have the primary cells, which are the anaerobic cells and they usually have a two day retention time. So when the wastewater first get uh, dumped into the lagoon, uh, the two cells are deeper. So a lot of the sludge settles to the bottom and then the clearer water fills over the top and then gets into the, the facultative cell, which has the 60 day retention time. And then once that 60 day detention time makes its way through, it'll come into the storage cell, which usually has a 12 months detention. And then once it's done in the storage well, you will sample at the release point when it does come to inspecting a lagoon, you kind of want to start from the beginning of where the piping from a lift station or where the, the vac trucks dump. Halfway through, you can see the baffle and you can kind of get an idea of the condition of the baffle. The baffle kind of controls the flow so it doesn't short circuit from the dumping point to the manhole where it carries over into the other section. This inspection could be carried out uh, once a year, depending on your facility. So the first one is the type. Is it aerated, non-aerated, or facultative? We will say non-aerated. And also the number of cells. So this system has the four cells, so the two primary, secondary, and the storage. So four all together. And then that's when we kind of go around and start a little closer at the color of the primary cells, whether it's green, brown, or light brown. So back to this checklist, we'll go with the odor. In, in the wind, we can kind of spell it, and it is pretty earthy. Septic is when it's really bad and almost unbearable. So um, in this next section, it asks evidence of the following problem. Excessive vegetation in the lagoon or dikes. Looking around, I would say yes. Any evidence of rodents burrowing in the dikes? There is some evidence, so we'll say yes. Any evidence of erosion? So we say no to erosion. Okay, this is a section where it flows from the secondary into the storage. Uh, from here, we can go back to the area where it talks about the sludge bar, excessive foam or floating material. We can see some vegetation in the wastewater that is growing, so I would say uh, there is floating material. Not so much sludge, I think that's just organic material that's growing. Excessive foam, uh, on the far side you can see some foam building up, but I don't think it's excessive. Is the fence intact? This is a pretty big area. It is a newer fence, so I don't think we can assume that it's in good condition, but from the sections that we can see, the fence is intact. Another question here is, is the grass maintained properly? Obviously, it is getting away from the operator, so we will have to say that it's not. So we have to get some large mowers in here to maintain before it becomes out of control. And these are the type of weeds that are very difficult to get rid of. They have the strong roots that are dug in. And even if you do cut them, they still survive and could be overgrown within six months. Because I've seen a whole lagoon cut and taken care of and then within four to six months it's back and unmanageable so keeping on top of it right away on a regular basis is ideal yeah and also this weed growth contributes to the bod levels which is the biological oxygen demand and that would overall affect the efficiency of the treatment of your system so the question talks about effluent discharge elevation Affluent discharge elevation. So with this lagoon being only in operation for a good two years, I would say, I would say it's at the middle of its discharge elevation, meaning that it, I don't think they would have to release this year, possibly next year, but it does take the operator's observations to decide 
whether they want to discharge or not. Also an indicator of the need to discharge is if there's an overflow system design, an automatic overflow, it'll, once it reaches that point, then they'll have to sample and plan for a release. So for that, I would say mid it says, is there rip wrap intact? Uh, rip wrap is kind of, uh, I guess, erosion protection for the dikes and the berms. So in this case, they do not. But I noticed on one side, it is starting to erode at the level at right now. So this community might want to consider some rip wrap. Just judge, uh, they'll have, uh, they can really tell once they do a release and the storage level drops to see the extent of the erosion. So with this inspection, it talks about the overflow system and it asks the appearance of the effluent. So that would kind of indicate uh, the color of it. Is it green, black, kind of uh, the way that we looked at the initial appearance of the wastewater and also the general condition of the effluent observed when we did uh, the sampling. So that would have to be looked at when we go over the sampling. And then the last question, is there excessive ice buildup during winter? Uh, and in this part of the province, I would say that that is true. There is excessive snow and ice at times, but that would kind of be a question for the operators that visit this on a regular basis. And then at the end of this inspection template, that's where the comments would come in. And the comments could, um, indicates the date and time the conditions that we're in right now so it's pretty windy sunny not too many clouds and also any other comments that we should have included in this template and this template is something to be done on site and could ultimately be in an inspection report where we talk about some of the deficiencies we have found, what we have observed, and also any recommendations or suggestions that we have to make this system operate a little smoother.